Well, hi again, everybody. Welcome in to another edition of the New Vegas Sand Trap, brought to you by Allergy Care Centers of Southern Nevada, where you simply brush your allergies away. It is absolutely amazing. And by the best golf training app in the business, Swing You, where you can start training like a champion today, and we'll have more on that a little bit later. We've got two outstanding guests on the program today, as you will uh, soon see, one in studio, one outside of the studio. Great guests, looking forward to getting involved with them. Great segments as well. Uh, our weekly swing tip brought to you by Swing U and uh, Gary Gilchrist, who's the director of instruction, uh, PGA Tour instructor for Swing U, Gary Gilchrist, and uh, the golfers forecast, of course, and more like our uh, weekly contest that we have for Golf Cradle that we'll talk about uh, a little bit later in the show. So what do you say we get right to it? Because we got a lot of show. Let me tell you about our in-studio guest, my friend, Matt Henderson, who is the Director of Instruction right now at TPC Las Vegas, a great facility here in town. Uh, Matt was named best one of the best teachers in the state in 2017, 2018 by Golf Digest Magazine, named Best Young Teachers in America, one of the best young teachers in America, 2018, 2019, also by Golf Digest. Really, really a nice honor. He's a four-time chapter award winner and uh, lots of certifications that he has that we'll talk about, like Flight Scope and other things. So he is very, very well-versed and uh, good guy, great instructor. So Matt, Welcome to the show, my friend. It's a pleasure to be on. Thank you for uh, taking time out of what I know is a busy schedule to be on. Yeah, I'm right from Lesson to here. And <laughs> that's good. That's always a good thing. Uh, let me start off by asking you a couple things. Uh, everybody knows that plays golf. The all-around game, obviously, is very important for you to be a good player. But what area or areas of the game, Matt, do you feel the weekend player should really work on and develop and why well i mean i think something that a lot of folks don't uh, work on at all is really how they manage themselves around the golf course uh, so i mean and, and the nice thing is is there's a lot of things that are coming into play like uh, scott fawcett's decade system uh, that are actually giving people a kind of a highlight and to actually move around the golf course uh, so just items of, you know, how to pick targets in relation to, you know, geographic features of a hole yeah. and re instead of, okay, I'm just aiming at a pin, right? Uh, so I think that's something that it, it, it is a skill, so it can be developed, uh, but people don't work on it at all. Uh, so that's a big one. And then, uh, you know, another one that, that I work on a lot of folks with is, is short game. The you short know? game. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of obscure kind of large mishits, like, uh, hey, I bladed across the green, right. or, you know, I, I hit it really fat. And I mean, there's some, there's some really simple things that we can do to that, that we can at least get mishits, you know, on the putting surface. Well, you see this as an instructor with all the people you work with. Everybody is so fixated on distance today. And I, and I guess that's obviously a very important part of the game. And I think they over, they, they underestimate, they don't work on you know, what we've talked about, the scoring part of the game, like putting and this and that. You get on the putting green, it's boring. What what do you do as an instructor to kind of make it more sexy, if you will, have more appeal to your students where they put in the time on the putting green, for instance? Yeah, I, it's a good point. It is boring. Uh, and I, it, it, I think a lot of people take the, the aspect of, okay, I have to be here an hour or two hours. I have to be here for this long period of time. I think my big deal is it's, it's kind of achieve and leave mm -hmm. is, is, is the I like that, that. Achieve, yeah, and achieve and leave. I like leave. that. Like, right, so I'm going to get in there. I'm going to be on the putting green for 10 minutes. Uh, and I don't, have to, I don't have to necessarily get myself real bored with that because I know, hey, I'm out of here in 10 minutes. I'm going to set up kind of a strategic game. And uh, it's, it's maybe very poignantly uh, focused, like, uh, okay, this is a speed game, right. and I'm just going to work on speed for this 10 minutes, and then next time I'm out here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab something else. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. People you see, and you see it every weekend or you see every day that you play, that you're out on the golf course, uh, if you go to the putting green, 
Some people will putt with one ball. Some people will drop two balls. Some people will drop three balls. Does it make a difference? <laughs> that's that's the, the traditional, just kind of pet it around yeah. the green, right? I, I think it depends on where you're going from. Like, uh, you know, you could do, like, if you're playing more of, like, a, let's say, like a playing emphasis type in practice where you're going through full pre-shot routine, uh, full green reading uh, scenario, everything that you would normally do on a golf course. Right. I mean, I think you'd want to kind of err towards more one ball like there and, and try to you're trying to duplicate playing situations as right. much as possible. Right. Whereas if, if you're going into three golf balls, different emphasis. Yeah. Right? So don't just practice on the on the two footers because you're not going to have two footers all the time That's on right. a golf course. Right. Yeah. So make it more realistic. That's right. You know, make it from 20, 25 feet. That's right. Try to mirror play as much as possible. Yeah. yeah. No, that's 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 good advice. Uh, when someone's taking lessons for the first time, Matt, they're coming to you as new to the game. Uh, how do they decide? How should they decide on who they want to go to, what kind of swing philosophy, if you will, that they want to learn? Uh, good one, isn't it? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a good one. So if, if you've never taken lessons new to the game, uh, I, I would try to find an instructor that teaches that type of lessons. I mean, I, I think we've gone into uh, an age in golf instruction where there's very much different classes of, of instructors that, okay, there, there's guys that work exclusively with tour players. Right. Uh, there's, there's good point. Yeah. You know, there's, there's guys that are really good with, with 15 handicaps and then there's, there's, there's actual programs, player development programs, kick off ready programs that are, that are designed just for that. Hey, I'm going to jump into the game and this is where I go. So I would look for, uh, segmented programming like that and, and, and the right instructor. And then the great thing about most instructors is that, I mean, that, that's how they market themselves. So they're going to market right. themselves in a, spe in a specific niche. Right. And so that's, that's how I go about how that. How do you feel about, I know a lot of people that uh, have started the game that have gone to instructors uh, because of their friends. They'll say, hey, Dennis, I took, uh, uh, you know, I took a lesson from uh, Joe Smith really seems to be good, this and that. I suggest you go to him or whatever. Is, it, is that kind of good advice or should you really check people out like you said? I, I guess I'm biased since most of my business comes through word of mouth. I'd, okay, I'd have I, to, I, I get that. <laughs> yeah, I'd have to, uh, you know, if it it can work, like, hey, I, I had a slice. I went to X guy and I don't have a slice anymore. It, it worked really well. I, yeah. I think that's how, I think a lot of things, that's how we do that in society with most of what we do. So right. um, it can work out. Yeah, it can hopefully work out. <laughs> that would be good. Matt Anderson with us here on the New Vegas Sand Trap on Facebook Live. Matt, uh, there are a lot of different swing philosophies out there, as you know, which is, is amazing to me because all of them all want to achieve the same end product, and that is delivering the club head to the ball uh, squarely and kind of in the middle. How do you think so many swing philosophies has developed over the last few decades? Yeah, that's a really good question as well. Uh, you know, I think a lot of it would go into just how there's really no system that teaches teachers how to teach. You know, there, there's no there's no one system uh, or, or one educational set. Uh, so, you know, a lot of it is devised to where, where guys can can form their own opinion, yeah. and then that opinion gains gains momentum, and it, it can kind of trickle down from there. And then you do that over a period of a hundred years, and all of a sudden you're you're kind of at where we are now. Yeah. So, I, it's it's one of the challenges that the industry faces for sure. Yeah, yeah. You uh, play a fair amount of competitive golf, which I think is great. As you know, there are uh, people around the country that teach that are deemed to be uh, very good players that uh, have never played competitive golf in their life. Do you think it makes for a better teacher if you kind of have walked the walk and talked the talk, so to speak? I, I do to some degree. I think there's a fine line there. Uh, I, I've been around some tour players that, quite frankly, I mean, they can't teach a lick. And it's not because they're necessarily a tour player. It's just because it, it's a different skill, right? Yeah. So there's a, there's yeah. a fine line. 
Uh, but then there's the other side of it. There's the guy that, you know, he's, he's pretty good at teaching full swing, uh, but, you know, he's never played any golf. So, you know, again, it depends on, on what you're trying to do from an, a teaching standpoint. I feel like it's very important for me to play, keep playing competitive golf because as I teach a lot of competitive players, you know, there's just certain situations where you're at from a, um, a, a management standpoint, you know, a personal management standpoint on a golf course that it, they're right. very hard to duplicate right. or talk about unless you've actually been in them. You have to identify right? with it. So I think it helps me identify yeah. with students. And so that's why, I, I mean, it, it, I think it is important to some degree. Yeah. 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 You know, uh, before we take our uh, first break, let me ask you this. There you know, golf isn't for everybody. A lot of people ask me, you know, by getting into the game, which I think is great. But I, I tell them a couple of things. Golf isn't for everybody. Just like, you know, football's not for everybody. Golf is a really tough sport. You have to have a lot of patience uh, when you learn the game because it's very frustrating. And as you know, players are leaving all of the time because of the frustration uh, and this and that. What do you tell people that talk to you about getting into the game? How do you encourage them? Uh, well, I mean, I would encourage anybody to do. I think you can you can play the game at varying skills. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to be uh, you know, really really good at it to enjoy the game. Uh, and, but at the same time, you know, I think a big talk, especially with juniors, is that you know, small amounts of athletic development at early ages go a long way to playing golf well, right? And, and so, so often, so often, you know, golf is kind of looked at as, as the game of, I was like, well, you know, he's never played any sports or I've never played any sports, I might give that a try. It's really hard to make the athletic motion that is a golf swing with, without some amount of kind of athletic background, right? right? So, you know, when, and that's, that's a big conversation to have. Yeah. I, I, I totally agree with that. And, and, and you see on tour that, of course, all the tour players are good, obviously, but the, the ones that really stand out are the ones that usually that do have a sport. You know, they've played baseball before. They've played football or basketball or something. They're very athletic. So that's, a, you know, that's a big plus, yeah, you know, if is. you can do that. All right, I'll tell you what. We're going to step away, take a short break here on the New Vegas Sand Trap. And when we come back, we'll have... Uh, some more with our special guest, Matt Henderson, who's the director of instruction at TPC Las Vegas. So stay with us. We're back with you right after this. Look, if you play golf, chances are you've made a fairly sizable investment buying your golf clubs. So why take a chance on having your clubs damaged or even broken on the way to your next round of golf? Here's the perfect solution, known as the Golf Cradle. Using the Golf Cradle elevates the open end of your golf bag and suspends it off the floor of your truck or SUV and locks it in place. The Golf Cradle prevents the chance of damaging your club as a result of sudden stops, potholes, or swerving. Its weight of base and rigid bottom ensure the Golf Cradle stays put. Simply place your golf bag on the golf cradle and the protection arms automatically close down to secure your bag. Then simply tighten the straps and lock it in place. Simple as making a tap in birdie putt. They have an awesome device like the golf cradle for under 40 bucks to protect hundreds and maybe thousands in golf equipment is a no brainer. Check them out and order at golfcradle.com. Don't wait, your clubs will love you for it. Golfcradle.com. Oh, did I mention what a great gift this would be for the golfer in your life? Golfcradle.com. Did you know that over half our population suffers from allergies? There's a new incredible way to treat allergies that don't involve shots, sprays, pills, or drops. All you do is brush your teeth. This new revolutionary treatment for allergies is only offered by allergy care centers. It's as simple as one, two, three. You simply go to their office and speak to one of their doctors about any allergy history you may have. Then a simple finger stick is done with a few drops of blood placed on your patient card. It is then sent out to their laboratory where it's analyzed. This state-of-the-art test analyzes for 180 potential allergens. After consultation, a prescription is sent to their pharmacy 
where a specialized serum is mixed with toothpaste and you simply start to brush your allergies away. It's amazing! So stop suffering with your allergies. This is great for patients of all ages, especially kids. Call Allergy Centers at 702-331-5230. All right, welcome back everybody to uh, the New Vegas Center Up on Facebook Live, brought to you by the Allergy Care Centers and by Swing U, one of the best uh, golf apps available. And uh, glad you're back with us. We're with Matt Henderson, who is the uh, Director of Instruction at a TPC Las Vegas, uh, formerly known as TPC Canyons. That's right. Why the name change? Yeah, I, I think it had a lot to do with just national branding of, of you know, if people are coming to Las Vegas and, uh, you know, hey, where do you play? Well, TPC Las Vegas, it, it's in Las Vegas, and TPC Canyons, it, I don't know, where's TPC Canyons at, right? Yeah. So I think I think it had a lot to do with that. Yeah. 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 No, it, it was, a, it, I think it's good for, just for that reason, yeah. too. You know, it but, really uh, identifies, because, you know, TPC has a whole network all over the country. That's right. So we're being specific. We've got uh, two great TPC courses here. Of course, TPC Summerlin, which is the private course, which is right. the host course for the uh, Shriners event, our tour event, and TPC Las Vegas, uh, the resort course. Matt, for everyone uh, viewing this, what's a good practice routine when you get to the range and why so many people don't have any they just come out there and they start banging balls yeah I, with well, no purpose i think the a, a perfect thing to do is segment practice and to really you could go upwards of four different categories but i would i would start with three and and the first one you know would be like a we call it block practice so like you have a, a very very much a, a mechanical piece where you're you know let's say you're making a swing change or working on your golf swing the block piece of practice would be the first piece of that. And, you know, really you should limit that. You know, a lot of people make that uh, a large piece of a practice like, okay, I'm going to hit a six iron full swing for 30 minutes. Right. And, and the problem is our brains can't focus that long on that. So really like if you take the first five to seven minutes of a practice session and make it block, hey, I'm going to hit the same club, same target. I'm working on the swing in the exact same way. I'm doing that and that, and that blocks that is uh, practice. So first five to seven golf balls, a lot of work in between those golf balls, like you're making practice motions, you're doing your drill. Uh, and then the next piece of practice would be random practice. Uh, and random practice is kind of what it sounds like, but you should hit multiple clubs, you should make multiple length swings, you should try to hit different trajectories. And random practice is where you're actually gonna get better at playing because mm -hmm because you're starting to introduce things that you actually do on the golf course. Like, uh, hey, I'm gonna hit some small wedge shots. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, right. hit, I'm gonna hit this little punt shot. Hey, I, I'm gonna right. hit that when it blows. And then you should introduce, uh, at the end of the session, you should go playing practice. And playing practice is when you remove your, your training aids, your alignment sticks of that, and then you're gonna put a, a very specific situation to a golf ball. Like, okay, hey, I'm, I set out and here's, here's the fairway. I'm going through full pre-shot routine and then and we're treating it in, like we're on the golf course. Right. So it's, it's not the first time that you see that. So you get on the first tee and you're freaking out because you haven't seen yourself in that in that light. You take that away and now you're actually seeing that on the practice. That, that's, a, that's a good point. Uh, some people uh, like to grab one club or another warming up. I know people, the very first thing they'll take is a driver with a full swing because they think uh, it kind of stretches them out and loosens them up. What's your feeling about that? I always yeah. thought that that was it works for some people. I, I have a very good friend I play a lot of golf with, very good player. That's exactly what he does. Then he'll start going to the irons because he's loose. He's he's stretched out a little bit with that driver. But uh, what's your view? Well, my view. So I mean, you can do that. It, it could work for for folks. I, the big thing, if, if it's a, a standalone warm up session, or I mean, it's a warm up session. It's not a standalone practice session. Is the main goal is to warm up. You know, it's basically to get your body moving. Yeah. And to to experience somewhere where the, what, what direction the golf ball is moving in that day, right? Which can change. Uh, so it can change real quick. It's but it, should, if, should you be loose before you start hitting balls? You can do stretching that. Yeah. a little bit. And, yeah. I mean. It, Stretch. It's all about the injuries. A couple, a couple stretches, especially yeah. especially hips. Uh, you know, if we can, if we can move uh, 
hips around a lot uh, and, and any type of, of that. That's how you kind of prevent the lower back from. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very, uh, very important. What's your view on training aids? There's a zillion of them out there. I think some are good. Uh, honestly, I think most are bad. They're a waste of time. They're a waste of money. What's your view on them overall? And do you use any when giving lessons to your people? I do. I do use some training aids. Uh, and I think some training aids are very good at what they do. Uh, what, where I would draw the line of good and don't waste your money is if it provides immediate feedback, right? Uh, so as in I've used the training aid and I immediately know that I've done something positive or I've done something negative uh, in, in recourse to using that aid. And so if, if it answers that, if it satisfies that immediately, uh, I think it's a good one. And I mean something super simple like lines on a golf ball, right? So just as yeah. an example, hey, I, I have these lines on a golf ball. Uh, I, I roll it over the ball. They rolled end over end. Well, it's positive and it's immediate. I can see it immediately. Uh, so immediate feedback. And I, yeah. I agree with you. Are there any that you use, obviously, uh, to help in the full swing as far as staying connected and you it, know, not I mean, over swinging, that type of thing? There, there's a lot of uh, them. Uh, like the, one that's pretty common right now is called Watson Swing Hanger. Um, you know, it, like a lot of folks have a lot of trouble with, with wrist angles, flexion, and extension. Uh, so that one's, that one's a pretty good one uh, to, that I, I, I do have and, and kind of use it every once in a while depending on the on the yeah. folks coming down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, how often should players change equipment? I know that's kind of an open-ended question, and I think it maybe depends uh, on their level of competency. But overall, it's not like changing grips every year, which I think you should, or depending on, you know, if you don't play any, you know, very often, you're not going to be have to do that. But as far as equipment change, Overall, because stuff is coming out every year, as you yeah. know. Uh, we were talking about going to, uh, Matt and I go to the PGA Merchandise Show every year in Orlando, which is, you know, a big candy store for uh, golf professionals, for teaching professionals uh, uh, like Matt. But what's a general sense of how often people should take a look and say, do I need a change of equipment? Yeah, I mean, with irons, uh Irons, I think it's just kind of fair use. Are the grooves still intact? Uh, you know, is, is, the, is the sole integrity intact? So is, is camber still intact? Is that stuff started to wear? Uh, you know, with, uh, with wedges, it's, it's kind of the same thing. Is, is the face still able to produce friction? Uh, and and, if, and fr everybody kind of worries about grooves, but the, the, the area you're really concerned about on a wedge is the area actually in between the grooves, right? right? So, you know, is, is that area worn enough to where it can't produce friction anymore? Uh, and then drivers, you know, Calway did some studies and, and basically everybody's buying a new driver every three years is kind of the, the gist there. Um, I, I think that kind of goes in line with, with a couple things. Interest, you're, you're, are, is, is the new driver keeping you interested and exciting about the game? Yeah. You know, and, and you can afford it, great. Uh, but other than that, I you know, three to four, five years on a yeah. driver. I, you know, I'm, Matt, I yeah. don't know if you'll agree with me, but I don't think they make bad golf clubs today. Nobody makes bad golf clubs today. And and to be perfectly honest, my opinion strictly, drivers are pretty much the same. It's the old saying, it's the, uh, it's the Indian and not the arrow. There's so much technology in these clubs today. Uh, if you hit it good, why would you want to change? Are you going to gain that much with a new driver? Yeah. Um, I think the nice thing where we're at right now is that fitting is very objective. Like we have, we have very definite numbers. We have launch monitors. Uh, so we can, we can monitor spin. We can monitor launch. We can monitor ball speed. And so we can get very, uh, very precise ideas of, 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 hey, is this golf club good for you or not? And so that's, that's my big thing from a fitting standpoint yeah. is if someone comes down to a driver, it's like, well, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence with the new driver. Well, honestly, if, it, if we hit the new stuff and it's, we have glaringly better numbers and, and better performance, well, then you, you have a decision to make. Yeah. If it's worse, you don't really don't have it. You can keep right. the old one. And if it's the same, it just it's on that want level. You yeah. know, do, I, do I want the new one or? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Do I want to have um, that, you know, shell out that what, money and yeah. 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 So yeah. 
I, I know. All but right, there's, there's a lot of good product right now. Oh, there's a lot of good products right now. Uh, last question before we go to uh, our weekly uh, swing tip and our break. Uh, why do you think golfers uh, are, are taking, and there's been a lot of studies on this, uh, fewer and fewer lessons today? And as a teaching professional, what can you do to change that? That's enough. That's, so I... Really, that's another uh, great question. Yeah, you is, could say is. that you were the, you were stuck. I was, I was, I was right. it. So, really, uh, the numbers are only eight to ten percent of the, the golfing population actually takes numbers and, or lessons. lessons. And so, as as the number of golfers decreases, that eight to ten percent is going to decrease as well, right? Yeah. So, I think that's where we're at there. Um, I think as an industry and especially as as teachers, what, what we could do is. Is kind of go back to that question we talked about before. There is there's a lot of there's a lot of strife uh, within within us as teachers about how to get people better, and there's a lot of fighting that goes on in that. I think we could reduce some of that uh, and do a better job of of really kind of getting in and, and going to the core of it. We're just here for the game and. We're here to get people better, and that's that's what we're actually yeah. doing this for, right? Yeah. Uh, so there, there's that. Um, but the other thing is, is there's some misnomers about golf instruction of, hey, I'm I'm going to get worse. Yeah. Uh, and and I think a lot of yeah. folks are, are are just deathly afraid of, hey, well, I don't really want to get worse to get better. To get better, and that's not true. And it, and it's not true. If if no. you go if you go to uh, to a uh, an instructor worth his salt. Uh, it's not going to be that thing of where you step, you take, you know, five steps back to take maybe a potentially a half step yeah, forward. Right. You know, if, uh, so that's the thing that, if we can get that kind of understood, that that's not really a, a true thing. Is, uh, I think it's a big deal. Yeah. No, yeah. that's a that's a very good point. I couldn't agree with you more. All right, uh, we're going to. Uh, it's time now for our weekly swing tip, brought to you by Swing U and. Uh, by Gary Gilchrist, who's a PGA Tour instructor, teaches a lot of really great winners on all of our major tours. And uh, we're going to have our swing tip, and then we're going to go right into our break. When we come back, we'll have more with Matt, but we'll have our other great uh, guest PGA Tour instructor, Brady Riggs, from Southern California. So take a look. We'll be back with you momentarily. <laughs> A lot of you struggle with tempo, the speed of your swing. And a lot of you run out to the golf course and you don't warm up. And you also, you don't practice much at all. So this is a quick tip to help you, is when you come out to the range, just take a few swings off the ground and make it to your right and to your left. So you really can warm up your body. A lot of the time I turn the club this way around, I take it back and through, make some nice swings. Then I put it in my two hands, I do the same thing. Then I put a club across my shoulders to work on my upper body turning to the right and to the left. Because if I don't get any flexibility, I get short, no turn, and then I rush through the ball. Then when I go out to the range, I try and swing at a speed that I can control. So the first swing that I do is about 60%. So watch this, nice and easy. I don't try and hit it hard, but I try and what? work on my balance and tempo. So the next one, I go to 80%. And usually I play with that swing because if I go at 100%, I feel like I'm gonna lose control. So here I go again. Now that was 100%. And straight away, I start struggling to hit the ball. So that tells me, go back to 80%, hit more fairways, hit more greens, and play better golf. Now subscribe so our instructional team can put you on a personalized plan to help you take your game to the next level. Since its much anticipated opening in 2008, Coyote Springs Golf Club has earned the reputation as one of the most memorable golf experiences you can have, and why not? This Jack Nicklaus signature course offers 18 signature holes along with some of the best playing conditions found anywhere. With its wide rolling fairways, deep bunkers and large green complexes, it truly makes this course a challenge for every level of player. Trust me. 
Coyote Springs has been rated in the top 100 greatest public golf courses and ranked as one of the top places to play every year since its opening. An incredible practice area, short game area for pitching, chipping, and bunker practice area will help get you on your way to a great round. Located 50 miles from the heart of the Las Vegas Strip, Coyote Springs offers the ultimate in desert golf in a beautiful rural setting. Combine that with a fully stocked pro shop, full service restaurant, all adds up to a great golf experience. Seeing is believing. Call Coyote Springs at 877-742-8455 to book your tee time. So if you want to play and experience one of Nicholas's best designs, call Coyote Springs at 877-742-8455 or check them out online at coyotesprings.com. What's up, everyone? I'm Ryan Rustan. And I'm Josh Kelly, and we're on the course with Swing U, the top-rated GPS, scorecard, and game improvement app. That's right, guys. Get distances to greens, hazards, live wind speed and elevation adjustments, even shot tracking and club recommendations. You can track your scores, stats, and handicaps for free. Check out our massive library of lessons and drills from top 25 teachers, or get one-on-one -on -one training from your personal Swing U golf coach. So join over 4 million golfers and download the free Swing U app today. All right, welcome back, everybody, to uh, the bottom of the hour on the new Vegas Sand Trap on Facebook Live. And I forgot to mention at the top of the show, we always come to you broadcasting live from the great uh, Rigel Studios right here in Las Vegas, just uh, steps away from the world-famous Las Vegas Strip. So uh, that's, always, uh, that's always nice to have. We've got uh, Matt Henderson in studio with us. Matt is the uh, director of instruction at TPC Las Vegas, and uh, very good instructor, by the way. He's very busy. So, uh, by the way, before I forget, um, well, I'm not going to forget. Tell everybody how to get a hold of you if they want to come out and uh, get some help on their game. You know, the easiest way is just my website. It's uh, www.matthendersongolf.com. Okay. All right. Yeah. Very good. And, uh, of course, you can always get a hold of me at, uh, you know, golfgurulv uh, at gmail.com if uh, you want to get some further information on how to get uh, get a hold of Matt or any of our guests. Or, you know, let me hear from you if you uh, some suggestions, some comments, even criticism about the show, which I know you're not going to have any. But, uh, you know, if you want to see a particular guest, you want to see a segment, you've got some uh, you know, anything on your mind, uh, give us a call. Again, there's the uh, there's the website uh, for you. All right, right now, let me uh, bring in our second guest that we're very welcome, uh, welcome him on to the show. Uh, if you've been playing golf for, for any amount of time, and especially if you're from Southern California, he's one of the most sought after teachers down there. They have people coming in from all over the planet to uh, get, some help, get some help uh, from our next guest, Mr. Uh, Brady Riggs. So let's get uh, Brady on. Brady, how are you? Thanks for joining us here on the New Vegas Sand Trap. Happy to be here, Dennis. Good to see you. Let me tell you a little bit about uh, Brady before we get going. Brady is a Golf Magazine Top 100 Teachers in America. He's had that distinction like forever. 2016 uh, Southern California PGA Teacher of the Year, Golf Digest Best Teachers by State, uh, Golf Tips Magazine Top 25 Teachers, uh, on and on and on. And uh, uh, we could take up, uh, you know, the whole show with uh, all of Brady's uh, accolades. But uh, Brady, let me let me start off and and ask you this: uh, You teach golfers uh, from high-level professionals, college standouts, juniors, but why do you think the weekend player is just not getting that much better? Um, it's a great question. I think that sometimes we see that with some stats, you know, with USGA in terms of handicap. Um, I don't know if I necessarily believe that. I think I'm watching better golf on the range, you know, on, on the golf course. But I think overall it's it's not as good as it could be. And I think people are just usually working on the wrong things. You know, they have bad information. They don't know how to practice very well. 
And that recipe usually is uh, a disastrous one, and people don't have a good time on the golf course because they can't control the ball. So I think it's just bad info and bad practice habits. I talked with uh, uh, Matt just before the break, uh, mm -hmm. and he we were going over what he thinks is a proper uh, practice routine, which is very, very important. Let me ask you, Brady, what do you tell all of your students as far as a good, solid practice routine? Well, I think it's, it's, a, it's a subject I think I've gotten way better at over the years. Um, I try to make sure people know what they're trying to do, have objectives when they get there. So if you're working on something technically in your swing, then there's ways to work on that that make sense. Full speed is not a great way to work on something technical. Um, we usually want to have a stick down when players are working on something technical so that they take care of some of the alignment and setup issues that, that would otherwise maybe be a challenge. And then working slow, working at stop swings, getting feedback in terms of visual maybe with, the, with their phone and other ways. Um, having some sense of what they're trying to accomplish is huge. But then if you have a player who's going to a tournament, that practice is completely different. It's more randomized. We put them in more competitive settings. Uh, we try to make sure they're working on ball flight and understanding why the ball's not flying the way they want it to fly. So it really does matter what the objective is for the player going to the range. The problem is people go to the range and they pull out their seven iron and they hit half the bucket with the seven iron at the same target with really no clue what they're trying to do. And then the rest is the driver and they're trying to hit it far and they leave there with zero progress. So the practice plan matters. And I think, you know, having coached soccer for a long, long time, that's something we do in that sport that really makes a difference too. Yeah. Brady, I, I, I want to ask you the same question that I asked Matt. Uh, people seem to be taking fewer and fewer lessons today uh, for a multitude of reasons. Number one, do you agree with that? And number two, what do you do as a top level teaching professional to get people, weekend players, uh, amateurs interested enough where they want to elevate their game and start taking golf instruction? It's a great question. I think that there's more accessibility to the information now from every teacher on earth. You know, we can, you can find out what teachers or, you know, philosophies are and, and see them give lessons on online that you never would have been able to do, you know, 15, 20 years ago. So I think the information is out there. But the in-person lesson, maybe people don't feel like they need it as much because they're getting information in other places. Of course, that's usually not a great idea to go right. off of info that isn't personalized towards you. Um, but yeah, I think that people are able to access information. I mean, I like watching other teachers online myself because I get to learn from them as well. So I think there's they, the info, information is accessible now, but it's not personalized. And that's one of the reasons people don't get better, too. You know, that's a great point. There are a lot of, and, and very good instructors, Brady, that are, are doing lessons online, that are selling kind of their packages. Uh, do you think, though, in the long run, and make a good point, it, it ends up hurting them more than it does helping them because you want that you, you want that one-on-one -on -one with that instructor? Yeah, I think it probably depends on the instructor and the student. Um, I think that is, that's what matters in that equation. But I think, you know, there's no substitute. I'm sure Matt can speak to this as well, that when you have a student in front of you on the range, you get to see all the things that the student brings. Right. A right. two or three second video of a student <laughs> doesn't tell you much. I mean, you get to see the swing, but you don't have the conversation with them. You don't get to see their, their feedback when they hit a good shot, a bad shot. I don't get to see their routine. I, I can't really see both angles at the same time, you know, so I'm I'm guessing sometimes with where the ball is placed in the stance if it's down the line. And I just feel like th there's a lot lost in translation when you're looking at a 2D video versus seeing a player live and in front of you. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. Matt's got a question for you. Yeah, yeah, my question would just keep going on that, like what your feelings are with, with the evolution of online instruction and where do you think we're going as an industry with that? Um, I, I think it's been pretty disappointing so far. Maybe it'll keep getting better. Um, I've had an opportunity to do a lot of online instruction and people willing to send me money to do it. And I've not done it because I feel like I'm not going to do as good a job as I would like to have done. Um, 
I think it's an easy way for an instructor to maybe supplement their income. I'm just not convinced that it's effective for people yet. I'm not, I'm not saying that may not be the case in the future, but it just seems to me that it's incomplete and we're not really getting the full picture. And I think it's just, it's fast food golf instruction for me. And it's just, you know, not my favorite. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you, uh, my friend. Brady Riggs, top 100 golf instructor from Southern California, joining us here on the New Vegas Sand Trap on Facebook Live. Brady, putting aside the professional players, uh, how much importance uh, should the mid handicapper player put into the mental aspect of the game as opposed to purely swing mechanics? Oh, way more than they do. For sure. I mean, it's, it's, people could really improve their performance on the golf course without ever doing anything technical to their swing. If they knew how to practice better, if they had better course management skills, and if they had a better idea about how to have a routine that's effective, how to hold a target in their mind, how to stay positive and, and keep that image in their mind about what they're trying to accomplish instead of what they don't want to accomplish they'd play way better without ever touching their golf swing. So people discount that as not being that important. But Matt, I see you nodding his head. Yeah. I mean, we both know that's where it is. You know, I, I work with a college team. My daughter plays golf at UC Irvine, and I help the girls on that team. And I hardly ever do instructional stuff that's technical. Mm -hmm. It's almost always about, you know, how to have course management and what's your routine and what are you trying to accomplish here? What does a good shot look like? Right. It's amazing how much better people play when they know what they're trying to do. And people, amateurs, man, it's it's they're thinking about everything they don't want to have happen. Right. And good never point. thinking about what they want to have happen. That's a very good point. Uh, one last question before I, we take our, our break, and you're going to stay with us, mm -hmm. uh, Brady. I, I was telling Matt uh, during the last break that uh, you're a very well-noted teacher that is very well-versed in biomechanics. Talk about that a little bit and how that really is going to benefit a student because, you know, there's kind of mixed feelings on biomechanics when it comes to golf instruction. Yeah, like a lot of people, I started my uh, teaching career because I failed as a player. So I took kinesiology in college because that's I, I like playing sports and I felt like that was the, the only thing that made sense. And one thing led to another and I started to study biomechanics. Um, where we are now is trying to understand movement patterns and how people create speed and produce speed and how to prevent injury. And all of those are things that are science-based. We don't have to guess nearly like we used to. We have facts, we have data. So from that standpoint, the biomechanical approach, I guess you would call it, is not a different approach. I mean, people have been, been talking about biomechanics if they've been talking about sequence for decades. Right. It's just we know a little more about the specific data now than we used to, and and it, it's enlightening. And a lot of times what, what you get is you'll have an idea about something in the swing that you've had for a long time, and then you'll see it presented to you in 3D, and you'll go, oh, yeah, that, that's the way I thought it was. Yeah. So it just sometimes validates things that you already believe, but it, it can also help you, you know, understand the subtleties. So it's it's a huge advancement in, in all movement patterns across all sports. Yep, yep. All right, Brady, stay with us. We're going, to, uh, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will have more with uh, Brady Riggs from Southern California and our in-studio guest, Matt Henderson. So stay with us. We're coming right back after this. If you play golf, chances are you've made a fairly sizable investment buying your golf clubs. So why take a chance on having your clubs damaged or even broken on the way to your next round of golf? Here's the perfect solution, known as the Golf Cradle. Using the Golf Cradle elevates the open end of your golf bag and suspends it off the floor of your truck or SUV and locks it in place. The Golf Cradle prevents the chance of damaging your club as a result of sudden stops, potholes, or swerving. Its weight of base and rigid bottom ensure the Golf Cradle stays put. Simply place your golf bag on the golf cradle and the protection arms automatically close down to secure your bag. Then simply tighten the straps and lock it in place. Simple as making a tap-in birdie putt. They have an awesome device like the golf cradle for under 40 bucks to protect hundreds and maybe thousands in golf equipment is a no-brainer. 
Check them out and order at GolfCradle.com. Don't wait. Your clubs will love you for it. GolfCradle.com. Oh, did I mention what a great gift this would be for the golfer in your life? GolfCradle.com. Did you know that over half our population suffers from allergies? There's a new incredible way to treat allergies that don't involve shots, sprays, pills, or drops. All you do is brush your teeth. This new revolutionary treatment for allergies is only offered by allergy care centers. It's as simple as one, two, three. You simply go to their office and speak to one of their doctors about any allergy history you may have. Then a simple finger stick is done with a few drops of blood placed on your patient card. It is then sent out to their laboratory where it's analyzed. This state-of-the-art test analyzes for 180 potential allergens. After consultation, a prescription is sent to their pharmacy where a specialized serum is mixed with toothpaste and you simply start to brush your allergies away. It's amazing! So stop suffering with your allergies. This is great for patients of all ages, especially kids. Call Allergy Centers at 702-331-5230. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are uh, getting ready to wrap up the show. We still have more, though, with uh, our in-studio us, Matt uh, Henderson, and our special guest uh, out of Southern California, Mr. Brady Riggs. And uh, Brady, let me ask you this. And, uh, and I was talking to Matt at the break uh, about this, and I want to get your opinion. Uh, there are a lot of good instructors around the country that have not played very much golf or played competitively at all. Is there a real advantage to uh, having played competitively, kind of been there, done that type of situation in relating to their students? Um, I don't think it hurts. I don't think it hurts. I think on the higher levels, if you are dealing with a player who's playing for a living, playing college golf, I don't think you can't help people if you haven't done that level, but I think it gives you a perspective that that helps. Maybe in some ways it can be a negative if you had bad experiences on your own, but I think that there's something to be said for somebody who's had to hit shots under pressure and knows what that feels like and right and has failed and succeeded. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's a negative. I don't think you have to have it, but I don't think it's a bad thing at all if you can help. Yeah, people. I agree. I agree, Matt. Yeah, the only question I want to ask you is going back to the, some of the biomechanics stuff. I have a, I have a small biomechanics space, but uh, you know I do a lot with body swing connection. What what where are you at there? Um, are you talking about different types of three D or well, just like just body swing stuff to where like someone's trail hip doesn't function or something like that. How how much of the population do you find yourself kind of working around with that? Yeah, I think everybody has limitations with that, right? I mean, it's something that we see across the board. Um, if, if you want to find a way for somebody not to read an article in a golf magazine, do it on fitness, <laughs> do it on fitness. <laughs> guarantee. Um, so as much as we know, we have, we need to help our students in that area. They're just not interested. You know, they don't care. So I think we got to work around problems rather than try and fix them more often than not. Um, with all my young competitive players, I try to get them, you know, working on their fitness and trying to be more explosive and, prevent injury and all those things. But man, the average 50 year old who's out there trying to break 85, he could care less. Yeah. He's not interested in fitness, it's an issue. That's that's very true. Brady, in, in all of your years of, of teaching and all the, the hundreds of students that uh, you have come across in your years of teaching, generally, who would you say understands instruction easier, uh, men or women? And why do you think that? Wow. Um, I don't know if I could make a determination one way or the other, whether it's one gender or the other. Um, I can tell you, like, uh, it's always interesting when I have a, uh, a sports coach from another sport. So whether that's like a tennis, I teach a few tennis pros, and they're usually really good students. A lot of times teachers are the best students. They have to deal with people not paying attention sometimes. Right. You know, and they, they kind of understand how to go through the process of learning. Musicians are usually excellent students, too, because they understand how to break something down small and slow and then build it back up again. 
Um, I've been lucky enough to teach Kenny G for a while, and Kenny's great like that. So you give Kenny something to do, and he does it small and slow, and then he builds it. So usually the teachers seem to me to be the best students across the board. I mean, maybe that's a weird uh, conclusion I've come to, but one that I've seen consistently. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, obviously yes. you're down in Southern California in the San Fernando Valley at Woodley Lakes. Somebody's in that area or moving to that area wants to get hooked up with you for lessons. What's the best way, Brady, for them to get a hold of you? Um, probably email bradyriggs at pga.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Red Goat. That used to be red. It's getting a little white now. I love it. Um, love it. Keep up with me. Twitter at Brady Riggs. You know the usual suspects. Um, if you if you want to find me, man, come on out. We'll have a good time. You don't have to wear a collared shirt. It's not necessary. We're at a public track, so you can come out. Come as you are. Come as and, you. Uh, come as you are. You know Woodley, Dennis. I know you know it well. I, I love it. It's such a it's just a wonderful golf course there. It's a public facility, but it, it's great. How long have you been there? You've been there a long time now, Brady. Thanks a lot, Dennis. I have been there a long time. <laughs> 22 years now I've been at Woodley, and I can't even believe that. I don't oh, know my gosh. That is, that is incredible. Anyway, Brady, thank you so much for your time. I know that you're super busy. Love having you on your show. You're, you're one of our favorite guests of all time. Uh, we'd like to have you back soon. And uh, again, you're, you're just welcome anytime on the show. I appreciate that, Dennis. Matt, nice meeting you, buddy. Great. Pleasure. Thanks, Brady. Brady Ricks, everybody. Top 100 instructor, like I say forever. He's uh, he's fabulous. You could find him on social media. He's really good. All right, we're going to step away, take our last break. We come back. We're going to talk about, uh, we're going to do our weather thing, and we're going to talk about our contest uh, for the golf cradle. So stick around. We're with you right after this. Since its much-anticipated opening in 2008, Coyote Springs Golf Club has earned the reputation as one of the most memorable golf experiences you can have. And why not? This Jack Nicklaus signature course offers 18 signature holes, along with some of the best playing conditions found anywhere. With its wide rolling fairways, deep bunkers, and large green complexes, it truly makes this course a challenge for every level of player. Trust me. Coyote Springs has been rated in the top 100 greatest public golf courses and ranked as one of the top places to play every year since its opening. An incredible practice area, short game area for pitching, chipping, and bunker practice area will help get you on your way to a great round. Located 50 miles from the heart of the Las Vegas Strip, Coyote Springs offers the ultimate in desert golf in a beautiful rural setting. Combine that with a fully stocked pro shop, full service restaurant, all adds up to a great golf experience. Seeing is believing. Call Coyote Springs at 877-742-8455 to book your tee time. So if you want to play and experience one of Nicholas's best designs, call Coyote Springs at 877-742-8455 or check them out online at coyotesprings.com. What's up, everyone? I'm Ryan Rustan. And I'm Josh Kelly, and we're on the course with Swing U, the top-rated GPS, scorecard, and game improvement app. That's right, guys. Get distances to greens, hazards, live wind speed and elevation adjustments, even shot tracking and club recommendations. You can track your scores, stats, and handicaps for free. Check out our massive library of lessons and drills from top 25 teachers, or get one-on-one -on -one training from your personal Swing U golf coach. So join over 4 million golfers and download the free Swing U app today. All right, welcome back, everybody. Before we uh, leave the show, just a couple of things to uh, to kind of clean house with. I haven't gone through my emails. We have a contest going where if somebody e emails me at uh, golfgurulv at gmail.com, tells me why they really need this golf cradle, which is an incredible thing to protect your clubs when you're driving to the golf course. You know, if you're bumping, you don't want your clubs breaking, and, yeah. it's, and it makes a great gift. Just go to golfcradle.com, and you'll find out. Send it to me, and we're going to pick a winner. We're going to ship one out uh, to you every week. So that's, uh, 
uh, it's really it's yeah. really nice to have. I've got one. I just absolutely love it. My friends are getting one. It just protects your clubs, and it whether it's in your trunk or your car or your your SUV or whatever you're making drive like me. Sometimes you make you know, swerves and hits and potholes and you don't want to break a $500 driver, you know what That's I mean? Right. Well, you you get them for nothing anyway, so you don't have to. Did you ever break a club like that and drive on the golf course? Uh, no, only it, air, airline. That's it. Airlines, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's, is pretty common too. Uh, real quickly, before we go to our weather segment, what do you expect to see at the uh, PGA show in January? Matt's going down there with me and kind of hang out every year. What are you looking forward to? A lot of teaching stuff. So I get to spend a day with James Seekman. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, PJ National Teacher of the Year. Yeah. Uh, teaching and coaching summit. Short lot of, game guy. Yep, short yeah. game guy. Uh, a lot of stuff. It's all on the teaching side for me. I don't do much with the equipment, uh, the equipment end of it at all. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's a great networking spot, a lot of great people. Yeah, you see, you see people that we, you know, we have on the show that I haven't met in person before. Or a lot of old friends down there again, seeing all the new equipment. Uh, they've got some great educational seminars. Uh, they have a demo day at at Orange County National, which is very cool. Yeah, that's on and I think I mentioned to you, uh, uh, Hype Sports Innovation, which is a global leader uh, in eco. Uh, sports things as far as startups and all that stuff is running their first ever global competition down there. Uh, it's all golf related, of course, and they're going to pick a winner. They're going to do it like a Shark Tank competition where these guys come up and uh, this is why you should pick my product and a panel of, of judges. And I'm, I'm very uh, happy to, uh, to be a part of that. And uh, we got to get a lot of people down there yeah, cheering them on. It's going to be it's going to be very cool. All right, right now let's go to take a look at our golfers forecast. All right, right now in Vegas, pretty nice. Pretty good. Fifty-seven, sunny. Weekend looks gorgeous. Sixty degrees on Saturday. Sixty-one degrees on. Sunday, no excuses not to and, play. And the wind is down. So and the wind is down. Great. But if you're living in Maine, someplace, coldest place, Prescue Isle in Maine, not bad. So you wear a couple of wind shirts on your minus 13. Would you handle that? No, that's like no. frostbite. Yeah, that's like right frostbite there. city. So. Come to Vegas and you don't have to worry about uh, about playing golf anymore. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the New Vegas Sand Trap on Facebook Live, brought to you by Allergy Care Centers and the great people at Swing U Golf App. Uh, check them out. Matt, thanks so much thanks. for coming in. Thanks for having me. Great information. And uh, we're going to be back here, same place, same time, next week with another edition of the New Vegas Sand Trap. Until then, fairways and greens, everybody. We'll see you back then. So long. <laughs>